Hare Krishna, Chandramani Maharaj. Thank you very much for joining the Monks podcast. It is. It has been my desire. I started this about a year or ago since the COVID started, and it was my desire to invite you because whenever I have had your association, we have had many deep discussions on various practical and philosophical topics. I always feel and en- felt enlivened by your. insights so thank you for sparing your time and joining today hare krishna thank you so you can go and get it so mahesh today i thought we will talk about various topics <clears throat> broadly speaking i thought of uh, we will talk something about journaling because you mentioned to me that uh, you journal regularly and then can also talk something about your speciality in prison outreach and then depending on how much time we have we can discuss some other topics also so <clears throat> i i became interested in journaling maybe a few years ago 3 4 years ago and it was more as a tool not just for inner development but also for outreach i found that there are uh, there are christians who have journaling seminars journaling retreats where they help people to go deep within and then bring in uh, christian teachings l- laterally not vertically not directly but laterally so but then i have found since i started journaling more regularly i used to journal earlier i found that it is very helpful for my personal self understanding as well as for uh, equipping other devotees not just attracting new people with gita wisdom but also equipping devotees for internalizing the gita's wisdom So I remember that you have been journaling regu- regularly. So how did you start your? Uh, did you journal before you were introduced to Krishna consciousness? Also, or you started during the time of your Krishna consciousness sometime? Um, if I remember correctly, um, it was based on a statement by Shiva Brahmapad, and this was around the end of the 1900s, around 1999, the beginning of 2000. where i had read and i had read it before about shila prabhupad statement that he said write your realizations whatever you realize write he said this is what the our back to godhead magazine is for we we want everyone to write uh, never mind two lines four lines one paragraph but every every day the body should write the realizations so there was a lecture from prabhupad I think it was in 1972. Prabhupada made that statement, and then he has again revisited that same uh, point many other times in his lectures, and especially for sannyasis. He says this sannyasi's duty is to is to write. So, not being very much uh, developed in the writing skills, I thought I would divert that. Uh, Desire to write, based on Shiloh Prabhupada's inspiration, into a daily journal, which uh, in the Western world sometimes we call it a diary. Yes, <laughs> it becomes like something personal when you use the word diary. Journaling more like uh, that. The connotation is is that it's for other people also. <laughs> so that was my inspiration. based solely on shila prabhupad's uh, instructions i felt it was more like an instruction than just a consideration prabhupad actually said that in, in an instructive way and he, he he gave it as a general reference to the to all the devotees within isca oh amazing yeah, i have read that instruction every day write something and that is one of my inspirations for writing but i didn't really think of that so directly in terms of journaling and in one sense if we consider that as an instruction of shri prabhupad not everybody may be able to write for outreach because that mm-hmm. requires a certain level of uh, presentation skills analytical skills lot of things are literary skills but write prabhupad says write your realization so in that sense prabhupad is presenting this as a part of our sadhana that just like we chant so write as a that's amazing so you said prabhupad re- revisited that other times means was it in more casual yeah 
Uh, I, I heard a lecture just recently, maybe a, about a week ago, where he again emphasized that importance of writing. And I noticed in the tone of his emphasis, it's, it's quite direct and quite strong that he's, because uh, he, he said these writings may in the future be, uh, you know, basis for developing books. And of course, we can also say articles or books also. That wasn't my intention. It was more like for personal purification and for reflection on some of the experiences I had throughout that particular day and a way to recall those experiences and not to have them experiences just leave me after the experience. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was something that I wanted to keep as a memory, a member, member being, you could say, something for I can go back to and uh, revisit, and get inspiration and see how things have evolved when I first started and to where I am presently. Because this has been going on for me. It's, I started in the year 2000, September 2000, I remember exactly. So since then, I've been doing it every every day. Obviously, there's been a few days where we're in travel and circumstances have caused me to miss, but I keep a time where uh, the day is finished and I'm about to take rest. So just before I, I take rest is when I write. I find that gives me enough time for reflection. I can sit down. I'm not doing anything else. And uh, then I think what to write. And it's not always an inspiration that comes. Sometimes it comes as a, a regulation, something that I should continue to do. Other times it comes as an inspiration. Oh, okay. That's amazing. That, uh, that uh, it's a, as you're saying, it's a regulation or an inspiration at times. Now, I had done a couple, I, I did a couple of courses on journaling. I mean, I, I taught them to devotees and new people. And uh, basically, to some extent, what you said that having a regular time, it really helps. Otherwise, if you leave it to inspiration, then it becomes very sporadic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. It can be. You could fall into a you know, lack of inspiration and therefore you don't do it for whatever reason. Yes, ma'am. But I, I kept it as, as just as like part of my sadhana almost. <laughs> yes, ma'am. In other words, uh, I considered it something that I, sh I want to do every day and I should do. And then there's times when I, I sit down with no inspiration and just pick up on some idea and start writing about that. And then all of a sudden other ideas come. So I found that's one of the reasons, one of the ways to... Uh, reflect on things that may not be apparent just by writing other ideas and feelings and emotions start to arise. And I find that's a good, um, a good part of the things I write is that things just appear as I'm writing. And then I may go off in one area or in another area like that. So the, the content itself is not uh, relegated to a particular topic it could be anything oh okay so that you're saying that there is regulation in the act of writing of journaling but not so much in the content of journaling now when i yeah yeah when i did this seminar on i taught this course on journaling so i recommended a particular structure but again i said it is it's up to individual so i i, I basically when i do journaling i try to do these four points that you know what was the best thing that happened today and why was it the best? What was the worst thing that happened today and why was it the worst? Uh, what was the best thing I did today and uh, why was it, why do I consider it the best? And what was the worst thing I did today and why do I consider it the worst? Mm -hmm. So now many devotees have found this helpful, but again, sometimes it, it requires a certain level of uh, uh, intellectual exercising to look back at the day in that critical way and mm -hmm. in that careful critical way. Sometimes you may not be in a frame of mind to do that. So do you use any structure at all? Or when now because you have habituated to it, the thoughts automatically flow when you start writing? 
I make sure I include one contact, then something about Srila Prabhupada in everything, every, every daily uh, writing. I say something in relationship to Prabhupada. Something, something, something about Prabhupada. So you'll find in every one of the entries, Prabhupada's name is there. Oh, okay. I include it. In it. It's just my dedication. It's kind of like a dedication to Srila Prabhupada as my inspiration for everything. That's... So that's that's one one constant that I find that I I like to include is something about Srila Prabhupada, something he said, or just a general glorification of Srila Prabhupada, or something about Prabhupada that is interesting, and I try to relate that to what I'm saying also. So it's, it flows within the same content. Oh. That's not always the case, but sometimes I just say, well, by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, and I'm able to do this, or I'm able to feel inspired in some way or another. In other words, um, Prabhupada is just, I feel like devotees should stay fixed on Prabhupada and everything they do as the basis for our, for our direction in Krishna consciousness. So I try to keep that as a focus in my writing. That's, that's a beautiful thought, Maharaj. Because in one sense, as our movement, uh, movement goes into the future generations, those of us who have had direct interactions with Prabhupada will become lesser and lesser. And I think reading and writing, reading about Prabhupada, hearing about Prabhupada is important. But internalizing our relationship with Prabhupada can happen by adding something about Prabhupada in our personal reflections. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it becomes almost like we think about Prabhupada when we have to quote Prabhupada in our classes. But otherwise, how much are we relating with him at a personal level? This is something which, which I will definitely try to implement in my life, in my journaling, Maharaj. <laughs> this is beautiful. Because other, yeah, other, so this is one fear which many devotees have expressed. And I also have thought about it that can journaling become self indulgent? Now I'm just writing about myself and my life and my emotions and my events. So I think this, what you want, suggestion you said that write something about Prabhupada and connect events of our life with Prabhupada. That can, that is one tangible way in which we can avoid journaling becoming an exercise in self indulgence. But any other thoughts in this direction, Maharaj? Our whole, movement, our whole movement is based on glorification of the Lord, either through worship or through actual glorification in one way or another. So I think that to include Srila Prabhupada is essential in keeping that mood of glorification. So, so, so you're saying that even the journaling, it can be more about, uh, say how we glorified Krishna and glorified Krishna's, uh, Krishna's devotees, Prabhupada during or served Prabhu Krishna's devotees during that day. So if we can have that mood of glorification service, then that is one way of connecting it with bhakti. Mm -hmm. A lot of my journaling, at least in the beginning, in the earlier years, it's still there. And something is to pray to Prabhupada to develop the qualities and the enthusiasm to continue in my devotional service and to learn more about myself that I could use in my Krishna consciousness. And I feel that that inspiration to, for learning will come from the mercy of Srila Prabhupada. So I feel that by praying to Prabhupada and directing things towards Prabhupada, I'll, I'll receive his mercy in that way. Mercy is always there, but when you ask for it, there's a tendency that it comes faster. <laughs> so I use this as an opportunity to ask for mercy. <laughs> oh, beautiful. So you made these two very striking points. One is that if we, if we know ourselves better, then we can actually engage in more service of Srila Prabhupada. So yeah. we can engage more of ourselves. The one metaphor I give for this is like the Kshetra. The Bhagavad Gita talks about the Kshetra, the field of activity. So if I have got a field, 
then if i understand the field better which kind of crops will grow over here which kind of crops won't grow over here uh, or sometimes maybe in the under the field there are some hidden treasures maybe there is gold or other things over there so if you understand the field then we can use it more fully so mm -hmm. we don't just want to plow the field so we don't want to use the body and mind but also understand the body and mind and understand ourselves better so so journaling can yeah. be in that sense yes. an integral part of bhakti itself of learning how to offer ourselves more to krishna isn't it maharaj yeah and particularly it centers around preaching because that's really how my the, the, the diary is really organized based on my experiences in my travels from year to year from place to place from from individuals to to individuals my experiences with that the struggles that i encountered the reflections on how i accepted the struggles how i was overwhelmed by situations in my attempt to preach how i learned things from others in in the times when i was preaching so it all centered around preaching a lot of it and okay. i felt you know i'm preaching i'm preaching to assist trying to assist in whatever small way i can shila prabhupada's mission so there's the connection to prabhupada also okay yeah in one sense uh, you know your life is devoted to preaching so when you're talking to talk about your life also it's going to be about it's going to about how how the preaching endeavors are going out and if say yeah that and if i'm going through while i'm trying to preach how i get overwhelmed sometimes by the by the the efforts of trying to preach how difficult it, it became at different times to maintain sadhana to continue with the preaching to travel to do everything that was required And so my early diaries and some even more later ones is about the struggles that I encounter in order to keep up on my service of preaching. Oh, okay. And based on the and the efforts I made for those struggles it comes out in the form of praying to Shri Prabhupada. <laughs> oh. For his mercy and guidance. That's so a good part of the whole reflection on my on the diary so do you consciously uh, try to take a diary entry towards a prayer in the end you start with a event and a reflection and a prayer or it automatically or you leave it free form as to how it will evolve and it seems to happen automatically now but that's that's what happens you know? it comes oh. to or it kind of ends in or sort of centers around praying for qualities praying for abilities praying for intelligence praying for generally just for mercy oh so then the way you are doing journaling it seems to be almost intrinsically a spiritual activity because i i had two conceptions of journaling when i present journaling one is that journaling is something which can help us in our spiritual life that by understanding ourselves better we can see what obstacles we are facing we can also learn through the journaling how to face the obstacles so in one sense the activity itself may not be spiritual but it can help us in spiritual our spiritual life but in your case if you are saying that your inspiration for journaling has come from prabhupada's instruction yeah in the content of journaling you have glorification of prabhupada and the content concludes in prayer the content is also about your challenge in preaching so it seems the whole journaling itself is a spiritual activity not something which is used for a spiritual purpose right right it's more individual than what we say uh, a tool for preaching in general it's my own reflections about myself and how to deal with them by expressing them through the pro through the process of writing okay so and so it's it's the introspective part of of krishna conscious it's a lot about introspection okay that's amazing and so i have talked with another with one of our senior leaders who also journals so he told me that you know he he has written in his will that 
he has got cupboard filled of journals he wants he said that in his will that after me all my journals should be burnt so i asked him why so he said that because there's a lot of anger in the journal i use my journal to process my anger when i had difficulties in the in in the devotee community or in the world at large so i don't want that to be read by others so y- you have used your journaling also for publishing so when you write are you co- like do you keep a consideration that will this be read by others do you i want it to i will i be concerned if it is read by others so i uh, first i think that yeah i've kept i've kept my journal the the information that i put in the form of the journal only within the in my disciples arena i don't go i don't go outside of the disciples in other words it's available online for the disciples only because i feel you know it's not i feel like the inspirations i'm trying to give in my own krishna consciousness to preaching can be a tool for my disciples to learn more about how they can improve in their krishna consciousness so oh. i keep it in that arena because there's a lot of personal stuff in there that will definitely be misunderstood by people in general and devotees in general okay so is it that every day's journal you put in the public domain immediately or you edit it and then you put it in the not in the public domain means for your disciples or well, only some of the entries you put no it doesn't go it doesn't go into the public uh, maybe every once every two years i put out a three year edition of the diary like that so i published it in in groups of three years like the first edition was the year the end of the year 2000 all the way to the year 2002 that was volume 1 volume 2 was from 2003 to 2005 the next one was from 2006 to 2000 eight and then from nine to eleven and uh, that's where that's where I pretty much finished right now and I put out four editions like that and on the cover uh, it's only it's in more like an e e access book I put on a picture of Sheila Prabhupada with some quote by Sheila Prabhupada on the cover oh to say because it's about you know it's about my devo- it's my life in relationship to my spiritual master yes so he's the focus for everything i do mm. so you so I, don't, i don't make it available he, he i only make it available on request in other words um even if my disciples want it they have to request it i don't just put it out <laughs> okay but even when you request it it is not say like today's journaling it will not be available online it is the previous say, no. 10 years uh, journaling which you have gone you have edited and then you have put in a book that is available not the daily reflections as they come out every day right so far i've only pub- only put out for general reading okay. from the year 2000 to 2011 oh okay uh, still working on uh, the editing a lot of the, the the later ones oh yes some of them are still being transcribed because I, i i write in pencil in pen i don't type it oh okay <laughs> i think it's more personal when you sit down with a pen and a pencil and just write on a piece of paper <laughs> yes and i have read in some books on journaling that the sound of the pen or pencil moving on paper that itself gives a feel that one is journaling mm-hmm. so that is it's true so then later on somebody types it and uh, then then after that you select and edit it or uh, how do you oh my question is do you try to select and publish because everything might be too either too personal or too large so when you say, say three years so is it all three years say almost 1000 entries from 365 to 3 or is it some of the entries all of them all of them yeah yeah i include all of them there but i'll, I'll also do other things uh, i'd like to play with rhyme i have a, an attraction for rhyme so i used to also practice 
rhymes from my journaling. Oh, rhymes means Krishna conscious. <laughs> rhyme. So rhymes means like putting Krishna conscious truths in rhyming sentences or rhyming poetry or what? What do you mean by rhymes? Yeah, like rhyming rhyming sentences like that. Oh, okay. Yes, I noticed like, that in your classes. You do have striking play of words. They become like uh, the points which we can carry at the end of the class with us. Yes, Maharaj. Hmm. I try. You know, it's just this is just a personal thing. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. So, <clears throat> in terms of uh, the benefits that you feel from your journaling, uh, what? Uh, uh in how would you i know we can't quantify them but uh, how do you feel the journaling has helped you mm. well one we can talk about it in two ways what i'm doing now and what i'm editing when i'm editing i'm going back in years sometimes 10 years or even more and i'm seeing what my mood was at that time as opposed to what my mood is now and how it's evolved or not evolved. Some of the things that I realized at that time that I may again uh, reflect on and use those realizations in my present practice of Krishna consciousness. So it's a way to <clears throat> um, reflect on where I was at the time when I was writing and what I said, and if, if it can also be helpful in, in becoming inspired in what I'm doing at the present. So I found that is a pretty much a, one of the major points about the benefit is I can look back and say, oh, wow, I said that. Yeah, that's interesting. Maybe I can, again, you know, resurrect that thought and apply it in different ways. So... That's fascinating. So in a sense, it's like you have a, you have, you could say the best of yourself preserved in paper from the past, or you can say the best of yourself or the most a reflective part of yourself preserved on paper. And then the present you can connect with the, with the, with that reflective you from the past and you can gain some resources from it. That's yeah, yeah. beautiful. Resources and also memories. Yes. That's, I have uh, in my, I had done journaling till now and I have taught about journaling. But this is a question that comes up how often or how much should we read our previous journals, journal, just, just diary entries. So this is remarkable. I haven't done this so much, but it is, whenever I have done it, there are two considerations. One is that Sometimes we feel it's a, there's so much to read and so many other spiritual stuff, but it to read. How much time should I spend on reading this? But whenever I pushed myself to do it, actually, I've also felt quite enlivened by it. So, but I didn't think so much in terms of the inspiration and the memories from the past. So, overall, how much time, how, how much time do you invest in the journaling and editing? Well, right now I'm going through a process of editing. Uh, there's a few, there's there's about two or three disciples who are working on different uh, uh, time periods, and I've sent that to them for them to uh, transcribe and send it to me in a word document. And then every day when I get whatever they do, I try to go through it. And sometimes it's six or seven days. Sometimes they send. A little bit more or a little bit less. So that takes about an hour every day just to do to do the re-editing. Um, and another part of the re-editing editing is a lot of times when I was writing, at the time I was writing, because uh, you know when you speak, it's one thing, but when you write, it's, it's a, it, the expression should be a little bit more clearer Speaking sometimes becomes conjecture or becomes be reflective. And so it doesn't always become spontaneous or what we say systematic. Hmm. You might also jump. So when you try to put that on paper, you can see when you read Srila Prabhupada's statements, the way he weighs it, 
how he hesitates, reflects, goes back over something, maybe diverts to another subject and comes back to what he's saying. So th that's the nature of speaking. But when you get into writing, it has to be more systematic so people follow a certain train of thought. So to transform that speaking into a more on paper type of an expression, that's basically the editing. Oh. Without, losing, without losing the mood that was there when I first put it on paper. And that's the hard part, to keep that mood and don't make it so just rote or very dry. Because a lot of times I'm just talking to myself and I'm writing it on paper. <laughs> that's so true. Yeah, this is one challenge when even we try to say, take the transcription of our classes and try to make it into books. What you said is that the clarity and the structure and the flow that is not so much there in the spoken word, whereas that is required right. in the written word. And in the sense, converting yeah. the spoken word to the written word is not that easy. So sometimes I don't even sometimes I don't even do it completely. I just keep it the way it is. And other times I just try to make a few changes in order to give it a more flow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, Maharaj. And I can see from my uh, uh, reflecting back over what I wrote, sometimes my grammar is off. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one thing. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. So when you journal, do you also say, encourage or recommend other devotees also to journal as a part of their sadhana? Or you feel it's a do you see it as, in, earlier said it's Prabhupada's instruction? So do you think that all devotees yeah. should do it? Or is it those who are more introspective, they will find it more comfortable to do it? Well, I've mentioned it a few times and I emphasize it because it's Srila Prabhupada's instruction, I think, for all of us. And when people do begin it, I've had a few, uh, few devotees come back to me and say, wow, this is good. I like this. I want to do more. I want to continue with it. Mm -hmm. um, most people find it, you know, it's a, just an extra time period in the day when they do it. And sometimes they can't find time. And I won't be able to find time unless I keep it at a certain time. So I keep it at a certain time, knowing that before I take rest at night, I'm going to make my entry. Oh, okay. So that's practically the last thing I do. <laughs> but maybe some days you might be very exhausted after the whole day. So because it, it generally requires a certain amount of reflectiveness also. So <laughs> or it has become because sometimes I try I find that if I start journaling toward the end of the day, then the thoughts start becoming activated and you can't sleep when you are sleeping also. When you want to sleep to sleep. Because the thoughts keep going round and round. Or you have become habituated to it now. Well, that part, the part is sometimes, yeah, I do feel too tired. Sometimes I, I uh, sit down and I think, well, I just want to get this done so I can take a rest. But then I think, oh, well, let me give it a try. And that's a lot of times where I reflect on my own inadequacies and that becomes the expression of the writing. Oh, okay. It could be something that something I'm going through at the moment or something that I went through, as you said, the best part of the day or the worst part of the day is generally the topics. Oh, okay. But sometimes it's just, just the time period I'm in mm. and how I feel at that time and I just write. So this daily entry yeah. at the... Sorry. This daily entry of the, at the end of the day, do you have a fixed time for it? Time duration for it? Like say 15 minutes, half an hour, or it depends on the day, how much, how the thoughts flow? Yeah, the last part depends on how the thoughts go. So it's not very long. Sometimes it's three normal paragraphs, maybe a little bit less sometimes. Sometimes when the inspiration is good, then I just keep writing until uh, I feel like I've exhausted the inspiration. So it could be more or less, but it, you'll find that it's never more than one 
side of one page, and that's a that's a long entry. Oh, okay. Uh, usually, it's about a half half a page on one side. That's that's the usual size, or maybe a little bit more. So that doesn't that takes how much time usually? Um, fifteen minutes sometimes, depending. But the oh. inspiration is there. It's even less, ten minutes. Hmm. One of the things I really like about it is that I sometimes I write about my experiences with devotees, or about what devotees have talked to me about that day, or something about them. And this is one of my fondest um, memories about uh, writing things down is I can remember that devotee and I can remember that ex that interchange or that interaction with that devotee. And that's nice. It helps you recall the devotee. Sometimes we forget the devotee after 10 years and then you read back around and, and you reflect it while you, oh yes, I remember that incident. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So it becomes, uh, it's, it's not just about you and your thoughts, also about your interactions with others. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when you, when you write a journal entry, at that time, uh, do you revisit it immediately? Or it is only when you're going to edit for publishing that you revisit it? Or is it say at the end of a month, do you look back at the month's entries or something like that at the end of a week or something? No, I just write. And as soon as I finish the last word, I close the book. <laughs> okay. I don't even read it the same night. Um, it's only when I go back over it for editing do I read it again. Oh, okay. Now, there are some authors. I don't know. If, yeah. Yes, ma'am. I don't know if that's good or not, but that's just the way I do it. <laughs> okay. Yes, ma'am. There are some authors who recommend uh, uh, journaling as first thing in the morning. They say when you are awake, just uh, clear your head by writing for 20 minutes or something like that. And they call it morning pages. And uh, some devotees have found that also quite helpful because to get out of the tamas, you start writing it. Writing is actually forces one into sattva guna because you can't really write without uh, having a certain amount of sattva. So I found that helpful, but our mornings are quite packed and to get time in the morning is difficult. So did you choose uh, the time at the end of the day as a, did it, was it a conscious decision or it just automatically worked out that, that that was the time that was best suited for you? Yes, that was the time that was best suited. And I fully agree with you that the mornings are too packed up. But I also agree with the principle that the morning time, the mind is somewhat free from the encumbrances of the day and you get a lot of realizations and reflections that just appear within the mind in these early morning hours when you first wake up. In fact, in general, I think, and this is true, devotees get a lot of ideas about their Krishna consciousness when they first wake up. Seems like whatever's been a concern seems to solve itself at that time. You get an idea, you get a reflection. So that time I find I get ideas, but I, it doesn't become part of my writing. So do you note down those so ideas? That is at, the best time. So do you note down those ideas at that time? Do you note down the ideas somewhere at that yes. time? At that time yeah, or later in the day? No, I sometimes I, I just have a pen ready and a pen and I write down maybe a few words and then go back over it later. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good time. For yeah, that the early morning is is really ripe for bringing thoughts to the surface that you wouldn't they never would normally expect to come. It just comes. The mind's in the right mood. It's more relaxed, and it's just uh, you know, you're not thinking so much, and so thoughts just arise from the subconscious at that time. Mm. That's my life. I just said, that's what I, I experience in a, in, a, in a regular day to day, but that, I don't use that time for writing for the same reason you mentioned. It just is not enough time. Yes, Maharaj. 
Uh, just a small technical point. You mentioned about the subconscious. So now, is there something like the subconscious within the Vedic conception of the mind, or we could just say that the, in the mind there are multiple layers? And the subconscious is one part of it because the subconscious is more of a the conscious and subconscious mind are more of say um, maybe constructs from Western psychology, but they are also intuitive. We can relate with them in an intuitive sense. But are there any specific uh, references to the subconscious in our Vedic tradition? Do you have any idea of that? The subconscious? Yeah. The subconscious. Yeah, subconscious. In the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, is there any reference to that in our tradition that you know of? Well, that's where memory is, is stored in the subconscious. So recall, uh, if you want to recall, sometimes you have to go into that, that uh, what we say, unconscious part of the mind in order to bring that idea or thought to the surface. But sometimes it comes on its own, and other times by the effort, effort, the effort you make to bring about recall, it may also come. So using philosophical or psychological understandings, uh, we understand that the subconscious or the unconscious part of the mind is usually the bigger part of the mind. What's on the reflective screen or what's on the uh, awareness screen is just a small part of what's in the, what's stored within the, okay. the mind. That's true. So yeah, the mind's like a, mind's like a computer. Yeah. What you create. What you bring up on the screen is just a small part of what's there. The rest is so just like in a computer, if you want to bring something else up, you, you hit certain buttons or you push something and something comes up. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. That's a beautiful metaphor. And in some sense, it's it's quite uh, it resonates with our experience also. Thank you. So how did you uh, get the idea of uh, publishing your uh, diary entries? Was it some specific event? I uh, just inadvertently, <clears throat> I, I came across a, uh, I don't know if it was a book, but I think it was a journal by Gopal Krishna Maharaj. And I had saw, I saw it, his name on it. And then at the bottom it said, for disciples only. So I thought, oh, okay, something just for disciples. So that was kind of an idea that I just picked up. I saw something that he had published and it said for disciples only. So that was my uh, connection to the idea that I should do something. Uh, well, and not, I, I was already doing it, but I, I thought of the, uh, well, yeah, it shouldn't be a public thing. It shouldn't be for the general audience. It's just, just for disciples and just for certain disciples and the disciples that want to read it. Yes. Yeah. So this is somewhat, so your uh, uh, journal entries are somewhat different from, say, like some devotees, they write about their preaching experiences. So yours are more introspective. Then it's not just the experience, but your analysis of the experience also. Yeah, and I also write about preaching. I actually started another journal called Travel Journal. And I, and I started that practically at the same time I did this. So I had two, go, two going. One was personal introspective, which is the one that I continue. And the other one was the events that I, I was experienced regularly in my travels who picked me up at the airport where i took lunch that day what person i met what country i was in like that so i only continued that one for 10 years i did that from the year 2000 to the to 2010 and i thought that's too much i can't keep up on both journals so I just, and i have that one too which is about 450 pages which uh, I'm still finishing the editing on that. And uh, 
that hasn't been really made public anywhere right now. It's just, it's only been with me right now. So. Oh, okay. But I find it, I, it's kind of like you might say my personal sense gratification. <laughs> so I simply, when I go back and read over that, I just remember all the wonderful the experiences I had. And meeting and people and traveling like that. Some of the challenges. The daily diary is more reflective, more personal, more like a struggle. The other one is more like event events. Mm -hmm. Just okay. Yeah. Miss Maharaj. You know, I use the point you made about sense about gratification. I recently read a definition of creativity, which I which I like very much. Creativity is intelligence having fun with itself so <laughs> so i thought of it once as journaling is like the self having fun with the self of course it's not just fun there's a lot more there's serious introspection but still it is it is a time we spend with ourselves and uh, it can be quite enriching over a period of time when we do it so. there's always something in there Sometimes you'll write a, a whole page and most of it will be like, you'll just say something, but there is something in there that is worth, the, you know, uh, going back over and learning from. <laughs> yes, Manish. So, in general, in your uh, classes, uh, do you find that... Uh, you whatever you are journaled about that automatically comes up does that also become like a resource for you to speak in future classes or it doesn't necessarily it's more of a reflection that is for recollection and future publication uh, yeah it's more like reflection and, and not for future publication but just a reflection the daily exercise of writing not losing certain ideas that i i somehow or other came across that day that I want to keep with me. It's also a process of memory. The idea of journaling also helps me to remember what I want to remember or what I should remember or what I can benefit by remembering those experiences. Yes, Maharaj. Actually, that is it's something. A lot about, yeah, sorry. Because yeah, Prabhupada said, if you want to remember something, write it down. <laughs> yeah. You know, one of the things which struck me in my journaling is that you know, sometimes some experiences which were so enriching, so life-altering, it seems so unforgettable, but it's so amazing that we completely forget them. So, yeah. so writing them down actually not only solidifies the impression of that experience in our mind, but also provides us an external reference point for coming back to that experience. Exactly. And uh, so, do you do you have some kind of uh, do, when you are journaling at that time? Do you highlight? Okay, this is an important point. This is not an important point. Or as you said, you just journal and you end it later on when you are reviewing. Only then you you look at it again. Yeah, that's so. I make it a, just a, just go right through it. Whatever I said, I said. I don't go back over and try to correct it because it's all written with pen and paper. So it will, would be all just like scratching out and re-entering. So whatever I wrote, I wrote. But I try to think about what I'm writing when I'm writing, or what I want to write when, I, when I'm writing with that. Okay. And uh, well, maybe one, one last question about journaling before uh, we conclude this. So, so overall, in our tradition, we know that Prabhupada, the journal, at least sometimes we have his uh, journal of the Jaladuta journal. Uh, and uh, recently, the devotees from the, the, uh, the Bhaktivedanta Research Center in Calcutta, they showed me Bhaktivedanta Thakur's journal. It was uh, not a daily journal. It is intermittent, which they are going to now eventually try to publish. But has journaling also been a part of our tradition that you know of? Well, you see, when, when Prabhupada started his movement in America, uh, whatever little things he was doing that day, he wrote it down, how much he spent on 
bus, <clears throat> how much he spent on buying some bananas. He had how much he made in that night in the program he had with a few people. How many books he sold. And Prabhupada kept a little bit of a, you know, a record in a written form that we have published. And I think there's two or three books like that. Of Prabhupada's early days where he was writing down. Not completely, but just things that were happening with him. Okay. The Prabhupada, Prabhupada did that, you know, as the when he first started his movement in the West. Okay. So, do we do we have any record whether Prabhupada was journaling in his earlier life also, or whether Prabhupada continued to journal in after the movement started expanding? I don't think, I think if there was something, what Prabhupada did in his early life is he more or less wrote articles. Okay. He was proficient in writing, especially his, through the Back to Godhead, which started in 1944. Yes. And then after that, and then many of the articles he wrote, which some of them turned into books, such as Easy Journey to Other Planets. And... Um, <clears throat> One book he had written in the 1940s where was it the uh, early 50s of discussion between Ramananda Roy and Lord Chaitanya, which is mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Prabhupada wrote a book on that whole exchange between Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Roy. Oh. So Prabhupada was a writer. <laughs> How much he actually published, we don't really know. <clears throat> Oh. He was writing. He was writing a lot, oh, especially yeah. when he was at the Dhamma Dhammadar Temple. He was writing quite often. Oh, okay. So, are you saying that there may be unpublished uh, writings of Prabhupada that may be existing somewhere that we even may not know about? Because I think that uh, that would be a big treasure. I can't really say. I can't really say that for sure. Because it seems like that devotees have gone into his life in, in different era, time periods in his life and found out as much as they could about him. But yes. there are writings that surfaced. There's a whole book of Prabhupada's poetry that surfaced. When he was, that was before he actually came to the West. That's amazing. So that was published. That was published into a book also. Yes, that's true. So in one sense, we can say that even if we don't have any record of our previous Acharya's journaling, just the fact that Prabhupada also did it sometime and Prabhupada wrote that we should do it, that can itself be a sufficient impetus for us as, devo us as followers of Srila Prabhupada to journal regularly. Yeah, and I, I think capturing the moment is the thing we should think about. Not losing the moment, keeping that moment alive which brings about the reawakening of that realization that we had at that moment. And that's one of the, the key things I think about keeping a journal. Some, some realization, put it on paper, and then go back to it later on and again reawaken that realization. And realization, memory is about, you know, becoming Krishna conscious. <laughs> that's a... In one sense, you have given your purport to what Prabhupada said, that write what you have realized. So you are saying that we capture the moment, not just for the sake of the moment itself, but we capture the moment where we gain some realization. And then that realization becomes more refined, more, more tangible and more accessible for future. Exactly. That's, that's how I would look at it. Yeah. Yeah, keeping, um, keeping the experiences alive through writing here. Yeah. Yes, Maharaj. So, thank you for this very stimulating discussion on journaling. Usually at the end of our talk, uh, uh, I try to summarize things. So, uh, it was quite a an inspiring uh, discussion, Maharaj. You discussed broadly about how for you journaling was, in a sense, following Prabhupada's instruction to uh, to write every day, to write your realizations. And it, you, you made it into a part of your sadhana and uh, you included, you do it 
at the you schedule the daily time at the end of your day and also that you try to spiritualize it by having something connected with prabhupad starting with something like a challenge a struggle which you're facing in your outreach and then having a reflection ending in a prayer so i love that idea about how mercy is available but the more we ask it the more easily we get it so in a sense journaling is a way of asking for mercy and uh, so journaling for you is is not something which is uh, for outreach but it is primarily directly a spiritual activity for yourself but as you have been editing it you have also been able to publish it and share it with uh, those who are closely connected with you and uh, revisiting the journals later it is it is you can get memories devotional memories as well as also devotional inspiration from it's like a meeting the present you with the with the recorded version of a past you so that rereading journaling was quite an insightful thing for me and rather than so this, so journaling can sometimes be based on inspiration but it is it is good to have it as a regulation and then sooner or later some ideas come up and then they develop in various directions and uh, journaling is also what he said is that it's, it's what prabhupad said write your realization so by writing we are making the realizations a little more crystallized and tangible and also he said uh, make them available for the future so that we can by so capture i love that phrase capture the moment so that we can relive or reignite the realization we had in that moment so this is a very devotionally i would say devotionally surcharged vision of journaling and then we also mentioned about while journaling uh, <clears throat> so at the end of the day it may be a little exhausting you may be exhausted but doing it helps you to get a like a overall review of the day and in the morning it could be helpful to get, for creative purposes to get ideas which you can jot down but morning it's difficult to journal because of various other activities and uh, as far as journaling if all devotees can do it because it's prabhupad instruction then we have precedent of prabhupad himself doing it also and if we do it in a way that is uh, because for us ultimately our life is for serving and glorifying krishna so we understand ourselves better then we can understand how we can serve better and we can also see how we can how we are how we are glorifying krishna to our life and how we can do that better so i have been journaling and talking about journaling with others but you have given me a much more devotionally rich vision of journaling so thank you for that maharaj thank you very much maharaj for sharing your association and your experiences and your wisdom in uh, in bhakti would you like to speak any concluding words maharaj um you summed it up very nicely it's amazing how you recalled everything we talked about <laughs> uh yeah um i think one of the things about the journaling is that if there was some outstanding qualities that you were exhibiting at the time when you were writing and then later on when you go back over it and you can see when you know maybe i'm not exhibiting those qualities anymore or these are the areas i'm actually weak on right now so you get an inspiration to see what you were doing and maybe you're not doing now mm, yes my dad so what you're doing now and what you were not what were you not doing then both both from both sides and you can see how you improved or maybe how you also you know went away from something that was actually good for your practice of the consciousness yes nice that idea of a dialogue between the present me and the past me that is a yeah, significant exactly. way of talking about it a uh, significant gain of journaling yeah. i talk about dialogue between different sides of us you know there might be a impulsive side there might be a reflective side there might be a hopeful side there is the optimistic or pessimistic side so dialogues between two different sides of us i talk about in journaling but this idea of revisiting our journal and diary entries and having a dialogue between the present me and the past me is a is a beaut- is a very valuable resource that i'll also use in my journaling and you also mentioned that talking about your interaction with devotees that also gives you 
they will help us remember the devotees and also gives us may gives us rich memories of bhakti for our future uh, recollection yes maharaj yeah and prabhupada also said your your writings may also be a basis of of future articles or future <clears throat> books that could be done it's just a matter of putting it together and seeing finding a theme within it and then actually turning that into a, a publication yes that's right. something i haven't thought about but i know the possibility is there yes. of course it have to be it would have to be relevant to some where it would have to be important <laughs> for people to get inspired with but but you can do that yes maharaj thank you very much maharaj for your association and sharing your time and wisdom Hare thank Krishna. you for spending, thank you for extending your time i know it's quite late where you are so i can see you uh, you made the supreme sacrifice just to continue this preaching program so uh, thank you very much for taking the time to uh, discuss these things thank you maharaj humble obeisances shri prabhupa de ki jai thank you maharaj humble obeisances Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. My obeisances to you. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much.